In this tutorial, I review how to create very realistic and stunning landscapes and terrains using Gaia Pro. First, start off by opening up the Gaia Pro sample file that's been provided. And once that's open in Unity, go to the main menu, Window, Procedural Worlds, Gaia, and then Show Gaia Manager. The great thing about this tool is everything is controlled with this central control panel here. There are four steps to the process of creating trains with Gaia Pro. Notice there's a tab for each one. In the setup area, you may get this when you first launch the file, and it may ask you to install some shaders. It usually is a red warning here. Also, you may have in the console down here some errors, some red errors. Go ahead and clear those errors. And you'll want to make sure that those are all clear because when you get to the runtime section, it'll create a controller for you and you'll want to run around and fly around your train to see it. And that won't work if you have any errors in the, in the compiler errors here in the console. So it looks like my file is clean. I don't need to set up anything. So we're going to start with step one here, terrains. This will create the trains in your scene that you'll work on in Gaia. If you already have an existing train in your scene, you can skip this step so you can go back and forth on these steps. So we haven't created anything yet. The world size here, I recommend doing either small or medium. Medium will definitely give you enough space to practice. If you're perhaps making something for your final game and you're not going to be using much terrain, like let's say you're creating a dungeon or something, I would recommend going small and it's just a little less work. I'm going to do medium just to show you the range of skills here that I want to teach you. And that'll give us a one kilometer by one kilometer terrain here. Um, I would target a powerful desktop since we're going to be doing this both at home and at school. And then go ahead and click on the green create terrains button. And Unity will go ahead and create a flat terrain for you. And then Gaia Pro will move you to the next step tools. This will add some common tools to the scene that will help you design and populate your terrains. The first one is the stamper, which will allow you to stamp your terrain, which I'll show you in a minute. And the second one is the biomes. The biomes are the plants and rocks and buildings and flowers and grass that it will add for you. And your options are alpine meadow, coniferous forest, giant forest, Gaia Pro sample, um, low poly or towns uh, for 3D Forge. I would recommend uh, one of these first three. I'm just going to keep it to the alpine meadow and then create, click on the Create Tools button, and that'll do two things. It'll add this stamp browser here where you can stamp your terrains, and it will also allow you to set up your player controller, your skies, your post-processing, what water you want, the wind zone, and so on. So that's the majority of this tutorial will be in this step here in practicing using the stamp tool to stamp out your terrains. Let's move the manager out of the way for now so we can just use the stamper here. Now what you're looking at here is a preview of the terrain if you click on stamp using this stamper. But there's quite a number of stampers here. In There's hill stampers, islands, mesas, mountains, plains, rivers, valleys. And then for each of these there's different stamps. So there's several river stamps several island stamps. And so what you want to do is pick one that you think you want to work with. Now, if you're going to practice with Gaia, go ahead and use any stamp you want. But if you're creating one for your final project or your final game, I recommend doing one of the islands. And that's because this blue area will be where the water is and it will kind of set up a natural barrier. So your players don't wander off into the water and get stuck. Or what will happen is if you use one of the other stamps, like let's say the mountain stamps. And by the way, you can raise these and lower these. What will happen is on the edge here, it'll just create a big cliff and they'll fall right off your game and then go into the abyss. So probably you want to create an island where you have water surrounding it. But that's just for your final, your final terrain that you create. I would recommend just exp exploring different of these stamps. And then once you find one that you like, then you can move it, notice, raise it, lower it, you can even spin it around using the rotate tool. So let's say that you like this one. What you'll do is you'll click on the stamp button right here. And then notice that it will actually create this terrain. It'll go from the fluorescent green and blue to an actual island with terrain that's already been 
painted onto it. So unlike what you did before where you had to kind of paint your materials, Gaia Pro did it for you based on some settings that I haven't covered, but will maybe in a future video. Basically, the, the steeper areas are rock, the flat areas are grass, and then down here is sand where the water from either the lake or the ocean will go. Now, what's interesting and fun is that you can overlay this terrain with another stamp. So let's say that you're not quite happy with it. You can go back here to the stamp tool, and let's say you want to create some mesas inside of your island. So notice that this is, again, the preview. You can turn the preview off, by the way, by clicking here. The preview will show you what will occur if you blend this stamp with your current terrain. And again, you can raise or lower this. So let's go ahead and create that plateau on our island. Click the stamp tool and then notice that that new terrain is overlaid the old terrain and now you have a combination. So you can keep adding these. For example, let's say you want to add another mesa out here and then go ahead and stamp it and you can keep adding stamps to your terrain to make them more interesting. Now let's say that you've made a mess of things like here's an example of that cliff face that you probably don't want. You can always erode that using the erosion tools that we covered in a previous tutorial. But you can also click on this button here and flatten everything. Are you sure you want to flatten terrain tiles? This cannot be undone. So what this will do is just give you a flat surface to start with again. And again notice that there's a kind of an imprint of the old terrain, but now I can just create a brand new terrain from scratch here, erasing all the previous terrains. And then obviously you can go back and add more terrains to this one. I can add some islands. And again, notice that Gaia Pro added all of the texture materials for you, all the ocean, the grass, the rocks, and so on. You can change that, but for now, let's go ahead and move on to the next step which is the runtime. To start with, let's go ahead and close our stamper. By the way, if you need to come back with the stamper over here, notice there's a stamper in the hierarchy, and then there's a stamps button right here to bring that out again. Because you'll probably be going back and forth once you have learned the tools to actually create your final terrain, you'll go back and forth. So let's close that down. And now the option for the player controller is flying camera, first person, third person, car, XR controller, customer, none. I think the first thing you want to do is the flying camera. The flying camera will allow you to fly around and look at your terrain. After you've placed your biome by clicking on this button right here, then you can maybe walk around. You want to do a first person or third person and walk around your terrain to see the biome up close. But for now, let's just do a, a flying camera. The skies are morning, day, evening, night procedural world sky. Let's just go ahead and do day. Um, the water can be ocean or lake in different varieties of ocean, deep blue ocean, clear or standard and clear lake. And then the wind type, there's actually a wind generator in here. I recommend doing the calm one. The location manager adds a manager to your screen camera allowing you to create location bookmarks to find different places. So let's go ahead and create a runtime. You can either do this now or you can create your biome first right right here probably to save time right now I'm gonna go ahead and spawn the biome and you'll watch what happens here it's gonna put in all these objects prefabs textures for the specific alpine meadows village stone mushrooms trees bushes ferns and so on so let's go ahead and do that and then let's change this to a first person controller so we can actually go and look at these real close and then click on create runtime you're about to add Gaia Runtime components. This will add the following. Gaia Lighting, Water, allows you to use the water system with underwater effects and shaders, which can all be configured in the profile system, which I haven't shown you yet. The audio lets you have dynamic audio using proximity-based systems, like the waves will make noises or the trees, the wind through the trees. It's pretty cool. And the player, as I mentioned, allows you to switch between different player controllers to use our camera. And then the location manager, which I talked about. So we're going to click on yes, and then notice that it puts in, let's move this out of the way, it puts in trees, it puts in some, some villages, some homes. You can zoom in and have a look at it. And then you can also now play the game, or play your scene by clicking on the play button. This is where it's important that you don't have any errors over here. And then, that, then now you can use the traditional WAS, and I can actually hear footsteps and there's music playing and I can hear the water. 
this player lets you really look very closely at the detail that's been added to this for you. Plants and flowers and grass and trees. Holding on the shift key will let you walk faster. You can even go underwater. And I'm hearing bubbles in addition to the music and my footsteps. So it's really pretty remarkable how fast this works. So that's the basics of the Gaia terrain building tool. I recommend what you do now is it's explore and experiment with the different settings. Maybe starting off with creating another controller, this time a flying camera. Update the runtime. And now when you play it, you can fly around your terrain to see how everything looks. So I'm holding down the shift key. Now I'm flying around and that'll allow me to before I inspected the biome, now I can inspect the terrain a bit more. Now you can you can use all the tools that you learned before, erosion, uplifting, lowering land, all those other tools to kind of fine tune your terrain here. And you can actually also add trees and rocks and other objects with the, the basic Unity terrain tool in, a, in conjunction with Gaia. You can also use other systems for creating rivers and lakes and so on. Have a look over here at the hierarchy and notice that Gaia Pro put in all of these prefabs, the small farm, the ferns, the mushrooms, tree stumps and everything. And these are all completely editable. So you can also combine, as I mentioned, the tools you've learned previously, the general basic terrain tools. So notice that there's a terrain here. So let's zoom in. And let's go over here, for example, to that cliff face. And let's use the erosion tool to kind of modify that using, using the general Unity terrain tools. So remember when I said you don't want to have stuff that's cut off really abruptly because it will look like this. And that looks very unnatural. So what you could do is notice that there's a terrain, a Gaia terrain here. And then you have this terrain erosion tool. As, as you did before, and you can then just go ahead and erode that down and make it look a little bit more natural. You can also do river systems here. You can create a river. Notice that it kind of hides the, the trees for you for a, for a second. Let's, let's bring this up and let's bring up the brush strength and really dig down in here and just kind of adjust the terrain. In this example here, let's get rid of that cliff there. There's probably not enough land, so you can go over here to the razor lower terrain and let's turn down the brush strength and let's raise the brush size and let's go over here to this bay. So I encourage you to kind of explore this tool and kind of review the other tools that you've learned so I can raise the land up here a little bit and just kind of make more interesting terrain there. You get the idea. So you can also go back and restamp everything. You can go back to the very beginning and basically create a new stamper tool, right? And then flatten this, get rid of the biome. The biome is all here. Notice it's all here. You can delete that and then start over again. Or you can create another scene, which maybe I recommend doing. Keep this and then make another scene and try doing it with a different stamp and with a different biome. You can try the coniferous forest or the giant forest. 